Welcome to the Career Medis Podcast. This is your host, Nassar Ahmed. And this is episode 85 of the Career Medis Podcast. And this episode is part of the A Day in the Life of series. If you have been following us in each of these episodes, I conduct interviews from individuals from a particular career, particular profession. And then we we'll get to learn more about what they do, what type of career path someone can take to get to their particular job, and so on. And for today's episode, I'm speaking with a talent manager and strategist. And our guest name is Ashwin Jacob. Uh, Ashwin will be sharing his experience, how he got started in this profession, where he stands today, some of the benefits, challenges, career paths, etc. Hey, Ashwin, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thank you for having me, Nassar. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Uh, this is uh, probably the first time I'm speaking to someone in your industry, so I'm excited myself. But before we get into the job and the industry, I'd like to know, where, where are you calling from? I'm calling from LA right now, Los Angeles, California. I'm not sure anyone listening to this, no matter where they are, do, do not know where LA is. Of course, it is uh, Los Angeles is the world famous city, and everybody knows it for the obvious reason. But uh, could you do? Could you tell us or share with us an interesting fact or a fun fact about LA that people would not know unless they have lived there? LA is a very transient city, so. Everyone that comes here is from somewhere else. Everyone is chasing a larger than life dream. And it's really for, if you shook the country or even the world on its side and anyone that wasn't really rooted there and was trying to chase something really big, they come to cities like Los Angeles to make their dreams happen and connect with other creators or dreamers to do some outstanding stuff. So it's a really amazing city and ecosystem to be a part of. Okay, wonderful. I would also like to know a little bit of, about yourself. So before we get into the actual job itself, could you tell us how you got started in this profession? What, what did your path look like? Yeah. So I am a first generation American and my parents are originally from India, small villages, very regular jobs. And how I learned English for the most part was by watching television and listening to music. And through entertainment, I saw people that had a similar skin tone to mine. Maybe not exactly like an Indian guy, but there was a lot more diversity that I saw on screen than I saw around me in most situations. And it was always something that I wanted to be a part of. So I ended up always wanting to have this career path in entertainment. And everyone around Boston was, it's an unrealistic goal. A lot of people go and they fail at it. It's not really going to happen for you. And what ended up happening was I ended up getting into Bentley University and to help pay for school, I started working as a nightclub promoter. And by being a nightclub promoter, I ended up getting a chance to meet with celebrities, building relationships, meeting all sorts of interesting people that ultimately steered me on a path that I was able to get started representing everything from models to digital creators, celebrities, athletes, the whole gauntlet of different fields and niches throughout the past 10 years and the entertainment industry, which has been amazing. Now, for the for those of us who are not exactly familiar with what a talent manager or a strategy does, could you give us a quick rundown? What exactly does a talent manager do? Yeah. So most people are familiar with talent managers or agents from the show Entourage on HBO. Oh, yes. So a lot of people think that both jobs are very, very similar. So an agent is a licensed job agent in the state of California or New York. And their job is to procure work like a recruiter would for any normal type of job. What a manager I like to kin it to is like a wealth management advisor. So I am different than an agent because an agent or a investment advisor needs to advise you on if the deal makes sense today. A manager's goal ultimately is how does this fit into my client's career path? How can it be beneficial today? How does it make sense a year from now? How does it make sense five years from now? And you really have to have that client's best interest at heart and also, you know, work really well with that agent because they're bringing you deals because they have their own viewpoint. And what you have to do is be able to communicate both ways to figure out which is the best path for our shared client 
and how to really amp it up and take it to that next level. And it's a progressive build and it's, you know, being extremely creative, but also extremely strategic and business minded on where that creativity and that art form can take your client as well as yourself. Very interesting. So you mentioned Entourage. So if I can draw a parallel, tell me if I'm wrong. So an agent is like Ari Gold from Entourage and a talent manager would be like Eric from Entourage. Is that correct? Is that a fair comparison? That's an exact comparison. Okay. All right. So that, yeah, that makes real sense, right? When you see the show or even the movie, you get a clear understanding of what they do. And that analogy made total sense. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, Um, actually a, a fun fact that I'd love to get your take on is who do you think the main character of Entourage was? Well, for, I think the people have different perspective. So most people would say the main character was Vinny, uh, the actor and everybody was around him. For me, I will say my favorite character was Ari Gold. Uh, yeah. W- w- what are your thoughts on that? Actually, the main character of the show, Entourage, they list television shows and movies in the order of who was like kind of like the, for the first couple of characters, the main characters. Mm-hmm. So, so was I was I correct in saying that was it was Vinny and Ari the main characters? No, no, no. It was actually Eric was the main character, and what's even funnier is Ari was actually paid more than Vincent Chase, the character who played Ari. Jeremy Piven actually made yeah. more than Adrian Grenier on Entourage, who's Vinny Chase, uh, which is a very interesting thing. It's really interesting to just get the read from uh, a lot of people because most people don't pick up on those little facts or little things in the, the show that they watch. That, that's actually very interesting. I, I never knew that, but yeah, that's very interesting. So moving on, now we got a base understanding of what the role looks like. In, in your experience, what does the day-to-day look like? What, what do you go through on a day-to-day basis as a talent manager? Honestly, every day is really kind of an adventure. I get to work with people that range from athletes to digital influencers, I've worked with everybody from Carol Owens, Jerry Steele, The Gabby Show, Dominic DeAngelis, uh, to consulting with radio personalities like Jason Ellis, an extreme sports athlete, and Big Boy, that was a radio personality in Los Angeles. And every client is unique in their own way, and every day has its own hurdles. So right now, I am the head of talent and brand for Iconic Media, which is a social media consulting agency. We work hand-in-hand with Holonis, a social commerce platform. And what's been really interesting about it is is I get to work with even more diverse sets of creators and people that are micro-influencers on their build-up. So you do is you kind of get to evaluate what that person wants to do, where they see their career in the next six months, next year, and you figure out incremental steps. So for example, yesterday I had my annual kickoff meeting with one of my clients. We discussed what we had in the pipeline for business right now, which ranged from a e-learning course, a couple of film and television projects that we're working and developing out, as well as some brand integration opportunities. That's kind of figuring out where these things fit in in the grand scheme of that client's career plan, as well as how you can maximize on each one of those opportunities and strategic partnerships or things that you do, not for money, but more for the artistic form or the awareness or the buzz that you can create around your client. Uh, so every day is really it varies from you know being in meetings and having creative discussions about what you can make to being on sets or being in shoots and getting that content made. And then the final part of that process is really editing it down, seeing how the story unfolds, seeing how many people are interested or touched by what you're doing. And entertainment is not necessarily the highest paid industry in the world, but it's one of the most visible. So everyone in the world kind of touches entertainment in its different forms at multiple points throughout their day. So it's really uh, amazing to be able to see the work and the meetings that you're in translate to a much larger audience. You you bring up a good point, right? Because um, now it is actually award season, right? So every week there's an award starting, starting from the Golden Globes to the Oscars coming up in a few weeks. And before that, most people, including myself, look at the actors, directors, the main the pictures, but there's a lot of things that happen behind the scene. People like you, agents, the uh, the engineering technicians, and so on. And sometimes, only during the events, you think about those. So it's interesting you mentioned that Hollywood is not just actors; it's it's a big sea of different type of people um, trying to make it work. Yeah, it's an ecosystem of 
extremely ambitious, extremely creative people that each play different roles. It's like a football team. Mm -hmm. A lot of people only know the quarterback of the football team, but the kicker, the running back, the wide receiver, the defensive blockers, all those people pay, play their individual role for that greater good. Uh, so it's an amazing city to collaborate with people and constantly learn since it's people from all over the world and all sorts of different backgrounds that kind of come together to tell stories. And that's what everyone really does every single day is tell their story. That is fascinating. You did mention a moment back all the things you do on a day-to-day basis. So can, I, I would like to ask you, for all the things that you do, what, what are the things that you really enjoy, like the top two or three things? I love the creative process, figuring out what the story you're going to tell and the medium that you're doing. it. So sitting there with the client, sitting there with the physical production team, sitting there with you know, other strategists and coming up with what are we going to do? Why are we going to do it? What are the actionable steps that we're going to do? And who are we going to be able to touch or affect or come into contact with by doing it? Um, that's probably my favorite part of it. The second part is really the negotiation because everything in life and everything in business is really a negotiation. It's figuring out what points you really care about, what points your client really cares about and what points the other person really cares about and then structuring a deal where everybody benefits and everyone's goals are aligned in a way that everyone comes out of that deal in a much better place because a lot of people view a negotiation as something where it's win or lose. Mm -hmm. negotiations and entertainment and business at the larger levels of things is really a relationship. It's a personal relationship where your goals have to be aligned because you need to continue to do business with the same person. And you also need to rely on that other person to say, Hey, Ashwin's a great guy to work with. You should work with him. And that's how you can really build up your business is by having your clients, having the partners that you negotiate with refer you over your business, as well as you being able to trust those people to take on aspects and functions for your clients. Uh, So I really love that negotiation process. And then the third thing that I'd say I love the the most is really just meeting the unique people that I get to come into contact with, learning their real stories from a person-to-person level outside of through a screen or somebody that I see at a movie theater and really learning what makes them tick what gets them excited and what they ultimately want to do and being a part of that journey to, to help them succeed. Interesting. Of course, any job uh, that, that I've come across has its own challenges. So what would you say would be the, on the flip side, what would you say would be the challenges? The challenges in entertainment is you really have to be on all the time. So it's not your traditional nine to five business where you wake up, you go to an office, you come back home. And as soon as you get home, you're out of the office. It's a lifestyle. It has to be something that you have to be fully committed to. And you also have to be extremely aware of each individual's personalities and their sensitivities. So a lot of times you can't be as direct as you would be in a normal business situation because it is an art form. It is something that people are personally invested into. And that's what makes it a little bit tougher is it's more than just a business. It's a lifestyle. It's a person's whole energy that they've put into what they've made and you have to be sensitive to that so it's it's more than just commerce so that's what makes it really interesting difficult and complex is the fact that it is overarching and it is an overarching part of your life that is so true and certain careers are like that and it's good to good that you mentioned that someone being in there doing it on a daily basis now if someone listening to this they like the idea of becoming a talent manager and they ask you, hey, Ashwin, how can I get started? What would you say to them? The first step, honestly, is start meeting people in the entertainment industry. Learn how you can bring a little bit of value. An initial job that I highly recommend to anyone considering getting into the entertainment business is apply to be an intern or an assistant at any of the talent agencies. Talent agents are really where a lot of people start off to go to becoming film writers, directors, producers, managers, studio executives, because agents are really the, the intermediaries. Be, agents and managers are really intermediaries between what starts, what happens, and an assistant really becomes an extension of the executive that they work for. You learn why they do the things the way that they do. And you also get an opportunity to build up your own network. 
Mm-hmm. My skill set and everything that I have is something that anyone that's on my desk gets to learn firsthand. And they also get to collaborate with the assistance of the people that I'm working with. So as they progressively move up in the careers in their respective fields or areas of interest or areas of expertise, other people that were helping them schedule those meetings and helping them coordinate between, you know, whoever I'm working with at that point are also moving up. So they get to build their own cohort and they get to have their own shared struggles that they went through during that period of time. And that's really what the, the most exciting part of the entertainment process or any career is, is that journey and coming up with other people. Does this career need or require any type of certification or education for someone to get started? It's actually one of the most diverse career progressions. So if you look at agency managers, there's a lot that went to Harvard and Yale, top 10 B schools, JDs, MBAs. And there's also people that dropped out of high school and college that are extremely successful and self-educated managers. It's really just a will to do excellence Mm -hmm. in the face of adversity, difficulty, and struggle, as well as extreme optimism and perseverance to succeed. So it's one of those careers that your network and your experience counts more than a particular education, right? 100%. And education can get you in the door as can a network. But it's really once you get in there, Mm -hmm. what you individually can deliver and how you can overall benefit the people around you that determines, you know, the the length of your career is also the trajectory of. Perfect. Let's say someone is in this career like you. What does the ideal career path of the future look like? I mean, for me right now, I'm at the stage that I'm ahead of talent. So that means I have a team of people that I work with that work on day-to-day accounts. I have my own personal clients. Ultimately, it's really moving into to being a larger position. Like a head of talent is usually an ultimate end goal for a lot of people. Hmm. For me, I really want to be at the convergence of entertainment and technology. So it's being someone that can help partner larger deals. So something similar to how Polaroid and Lady Gaga were able to connect. So being able to figure out those deals that really make sense between the entertainment and the technology sector and the convergence of how digital technology and these social media platforms and digital media platforms like Netflix are really taking over the traditional television and film model, which has been, you know, you watch your television when you're at your home and you go to the movies and occasionally you rent some DVDs to, I have access to most films on my computer and get them on Amazon. I can get them on Netflix. And if I'm on the go or if I'm stuck in an Uber or a train ride, I can view them on my iPad, my Fire, or on my phone. So really being one of those people that's able to help pioneer this new digital age of entertainment and how people really get affected by that art form. Very interesting. It's actually, uh, I did not expect you to bring up technology because pe- most people do not relate to that. But you're right. It's, uh, technology is changing everything. I think movie industry pioneers, there's a lot of technology that influences that industry more than before it hits the mainstream. So um, I'm glad you brought that up. So, and we have covered a lot of ground today, Ashwin. You covered about your story, of what the day-to-day looks like, what the future could look like. As we are about to wrap up, any final pieces of advice for our listeners? Yeah. I mean, I think one of the most true things I've learned in entertainment is it's a business that really can break you down or really build you up. It's really staying grounded to why you do it. And then realizing that we're all part of a greater scheme of things and figuring out how you can really bring value to others selflessly. And that's truly how you succeed in this business. And the thing with this business is it's an extremely glamour filled business that a lot of people see the highs, but people rarely talk about any of the lows. So it's really realizing it's something that you're committed to living day in, day out when you wake up to the moment that you go to bed. And if you're happy in that lifestyle and you're really immersed and enamored by entertainment and the possibility of touching millions of people, that's something that you should definitely chase and take that risk and hop in a car and drive across country. When I first moved out here, I drove in a car with one of my friends from Boston, Massachusetts, 3,000 plus miles from coast to coast, sea to sea line with two cases of Red Bull, $500 in an air mattress that leaked air. 
And, uh, you know, within a year I signed some fairly large clients that were, you know, some of the top digital talent, some top athletes and some other, you know, actors. And it was an amazing journey and really being aware and enjoying that journey is probably the thing I tell people to cherish the most if they're getting into a career in entertainment. It's not about getting to that end destination. It's not about, you know, becoming the head of talent at any of the agencies or any of the companies that you work at. It's really about enjoying that journey and realizing that everything that you're doing is getting you towards where you need to be and helping you evolve. So it's really being grateful for where you're at right now. That's an amazing advice. I think it applies to any careers. Enjoy your journey. The destination will always be there, but enjoy the journey. Ashwin, thanks for sharing your ideas, your wisdom. It was great having you as a guest on our show. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, folks, for listening to yet another episode of the Career Medis podcast. I have written a brief summary of the interview, and you can see it on careermedis.com. And you can also find us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, YouTube. If you enjoyed this episode and also learned something new, feel free to post a comment or review. And if you really, really loved it, definitely go ahead and share this episode among your network. Until next time, this is Nisar Ahmad, your host for the Career Medis Podcast. Thank you.